So an IoT device would not be an IoT device without a Blinky demo, right? So we need to run some Blinky code to kind of have this LED turning on and off. Now that Azure Sphere is publicly available, I have Ed Nightingale back on the IoT show uh, to show us exactly how you run the Blinky demo for Azure Sphere. Hey guys, I'm Olivier, your host on the IoT Show here. Um, we are uh, about to show you some demos, or actually Ed is going to do all the work and we're just <laughs> here to bug him. He's going to show us the dev experience for the Azure Sphere uh, product. And in that case, we're going to talk about the kit uh, that is now available, right? Yeah. So people can get it online and buy it. People who per, like, actually pre-ordered that should get there soon. Yep. Um, Ed, thanks for coming back to the show. Thanks, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm sure people are they're <laughs> not going to get sick of us. I think they're going to be super happy with all the content you're, you're giving and, and right. the fantastic Azure Sphere product. This is the box that people are going to receive or get when they go to the Seed website. That's, that's right. That's a Seed um, you know, a dev kit that we have here. Um, can you tell us a bit about this kit? Sure. So what comes out of the box is the Azure Sphere uh, development board. Okay. So this can be used to develop uh, different prototype products okay. with the MT3620, which is the first Azure Sphere certified MCU. It has okay. all the pinouts available, so you can pull those out from different peripherals. Okay. Then you also will download a Visual Studio extension, part okay. of Visual Studio Experience, as well as the SDK. And then with that, away you go. We're going to walk okay. through that today. One quick question, yeah. and um, the pinning here, yep. is it something that is actually a standard or allows me to use existing you know, hats or uh, anything else that uh, is out there? There are no, not existing hats right okay. now, okay. but it is uh, all documents, part of the hardware documentation. Okay. So you can go in, you can connect into, for example, the UARTs that are available on the device, and then hook up your peripherals and start using them. Oh, okay. And we can expect to have eventually an ecosystem of like people, once they are on board with that, say, hey, yeah. I'm going to create these little hats That's right. like we have for the Arduinos or Raspberry Pis or things yeah. like that. Uh, nice. Yeah, make it easier to connect those different peripherals. That's yeah. definitely a possibility. I'm looking forward to it. Good. I can tell you. Okay, Good. cool. So we'll talk about developer experience. How do you go about, so you get the kit, you unbox it, you're super yeah. happy, now yeah. what's next? Well, the uh, really most important point here is that we have deep integration with Visual Studio. Okay. Visual Studio has some of the most powerful development tools on the planet. It's a great experience, it's easy yep. to use, it's a huge ecosystem, and Azure Sphere's development experience is really embedded into that Visual Studio experience. We want okay. to make it your time to market faster. We're gonna make it easier to bring those applications experience to end users yep. through people's devices. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So at which version of Visual Studio are we talking about here? So community edition works or if you have okay. enterprise edition that works as well. Awesome. So you can actually develop for free for that device. Basically. That's right. Awesome. Cool. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, <laughs> you're fine. All right, let's go. So let's start with the Azure Sphere tool. This is part of okay. the tool that comes as part of the development kit okay. and it allows you to interact with the device. Now, why are we starting here? Well, when you connect up with Azure Sphere as a developer, mm -hmm. you're actually going to set up a tenant. Okay. And this is uh, this tenant gives you access to all of your different devices. So okay. I have my own tenant here. It's called Songbird. It has its own uh, I identifier. Okay. And then I can use that tenant to start to interact with the device. Okay. Now, why would I need to do that? Well, we talked earlier about how every Azure Sphere MCU is known by Microsoft at the chip's birth at okay. the silicon manufacturer okay. as part of the security. We know its identity. Okay. So when that uh, chip goes in the distribution channel, we, it doesn't have an owner, other than we know that it's been born. Now, as a device manufacturer, you claim that chip. Mm -hmm. And you basically say, this is my chip. I'm going to put it into a device. Okay, got it. So we're going to claim the device. Okay. The for now, everything happens here locally, right? You have no con no connection to a service, what not, right? Uh, this is actually going into Azure our Azure oh, Sphere okay. security service right okay. now. So the tenant is actually something you set up with the Azure Sphere uh, service, right? The, the yeah. Azure Sphere security service. That's right. Okay, so previously, yeah, yeah. I had set up my own credentials and mm -hmm. with Azure Sphere, so I okay. have a separate set of credentials for this device. Okay. And I logged in before we started the IoT show. Oh, okay. I didn't want to type in my password in front of all no, these no, people. No, you don't want that. And then <laughs> I and I created a tenant, so I have okay, that tenant got it, available. Got it, got it, got so this is actually interactive interacting with the client side of Azure Sphere Security Service. Okay, and ahead. now what this has done is it's successfully claimed this is the device ID uh -huh. into my tenant, okay. and now I own the device. Okay. That's great. Okay. So now let's go to the Visual Studio Experience. So if we go to the Visual Studio Experience, what you can do is if you go to File, New Project. And actually, that it. makes me think, sorry, I was thinking about what you just said, but that's very interesting because that means that as a developer, you have to claim the device, meaning that I cannot be a random guy coming to a hardware device and plugging in a USB cable and say, I'm going to use Visual Studio to hack this device, right? That's right. Because you really have to, to, to check with the security service, like, 
Like right. this, right. step number one so in terms of security. My device. Yep, device. that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so okay. now you see under Visual Studio C++, there is an Azure Sphere set okay. of templates. And so C++ only uh, right C. now, right? C, I'm sorry. So it's uh, it's, it says, okay. so listen, it's C only. It's C the current only support for language. developing, which is that's like right. what's used for MCUs anyways, that's everywhere, right? Yep, that's right. That's okay, what's cool. common for all these embedded devices. Yep, yep. You're going to see Blink, and okay. Blink is the hello world. Uh, for uh, these IoT devices. So I'm going to okay. click OK, and it's going to pull up the Blink template. Now, this is your typical Visual Studio experience. Okay. And then uh, we're going to look, and there's actually a button uh, press here. And what we're going to do is you can put a um, breakpoint in. Okay. And then once we hit the breakpoint, we're going to be able to interact with the device. And, uh, and, and away we go. So let's put okay. a breakpoint in. So because you're in Visual Studio, you have all the IntelliSense experience, like all the libraries that you're using your code to access the Azure Sphere right. OS resources are in there. That's so right. Perfect. Documentation is in there, F1, and things like that. Now. OK. You this started the said application and failed. It failed. Now, why did it fail? Well, we're talking about a secure device, yeah, right? Yeah. I talked earlier about how uh, the Azure Sphere MCU only runs signed software that's been signed by Microsoft. Uh -huh. Visual Studio is signing this, but it's with test signing, okay, right? Okay. It's not a production sign kit. So the device said, hey, I don't know what you are. I'm going to reject it. Yes, Great. even though you even though you actually claimed the device on your machine, right? Just because I claimed yeah. it doesn't mean that I'm allowed to run unsigned software on it, right? We don't trust it. Okay. So there's actually a command called prep debug. Okay. And uh, prep debug allows you to take this device and start interacting with it and and developing with it. So got we're going to do Azure Sphere. So you're basically, hey, device. switch to debug mode, right? That's for, right. Okay, got it. Prep debug. Do you have an unprep debug command, or is it by default? Yes, to, there okay. is. Uh, it comes out of the box ready for a field. Okay. And then there is a field, uh, a prep field. And that okay. means this is a field deployment. So it's not done, allowed to run test sites. Okay. You're done developing on that one. You want to prepare it for a release. Got it. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So what is done now is it's gone up to the Azure Sphere Security Service and said, I need the capability to develop software. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about this is that this capability is only good for this chip. So yep. even if someone stole that capability and tried to put it on your other devices in the field, it wouldn't do any good. So it's really locked down in terms of the development experience. So right now, the device is rebooting, and we're deploying GDB Server, okay. which allows you to actually interactively debug. And then once that's done, we'll go back to Visual Studio. Okay. We'll run Blinky, and we'll see if it works. So Love that's it. It completed All successfully. Right. Love it. We're back. Yep. Let's, hit, uh, let's hit F5. What's going on here? And it started the debugger. And okay. it's going to start running. So you're doing remote debugging, right? Doing so remote debugging. Yeah. I just hit F5. It's the same experience that you expect. And there it goes. Mm -hmm. so you can see this is blinking. And that's Hello World. And then I put a breakpoint here. So if I hit the button, what ends up happening is Boom, that fast. We broke. You yeah. have all the everything you expect out of this. You can inspect. You can look at your stack. You and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to, whoops. I'm just going to disable this breakpoint for a second. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to continue. And then you're going to see that the rate of blinking on the device has slowed down because I pushed that button. Okay. So out of the box, we've become a device manufacturer. We've got a tenant. We've mm -hmm. claimed it. We yeah. set it up for debugging and developing. And in just a couple minutes, we're writing and shipping yep. and writing and deploying applications. And you're running Blinky. One thing that actually wanna, I want to bring up is that it's it's incredibly simple. Actually, the security is, is very high stake and it's super secure. Yeah. But you guys are making it simple for developers because they don't have to go through hoops and That's install right. certificates and, right. and all of that. That's right. Is it fair to say that the security service is actually helping a lot because it's taking care of lots of things with that little tool you have in order to establish the secure trust between the developer device and the device, right? Absolutely. I and mean, that's what happens when we talk about security being foundational and for having Microsoft take some of the responsibility because it means that uh, security is one of those things that it scales out. When we do it once, yeah. all these different developers get to benefit from it. Yeah. So it will uh, really take a lot for a developer to mess up in there, right? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Sorry, yeah. guys, but I know it happens, <laughs> right? And lots of security gaps are actually because some developer, not intentionally, but forgot something or didn't pay attention well, to this kind of thing. And right? that's where all the tools that are available out in the Visual Studio ecosystem to help you write more secure code are important yeah. to be able to take advantage yeah, of them. Yeah. And sometimes and that to think about it, it's, it's that's there right. by nature. That's right. right. And another time, I'd love to come back and talk about the integration with Azure IoT yeah. and talk about the Azure IoT experience. Yeah, yeah. And 
I think there's another area as well that we're going to talk about, which is like you, you talked about in previous episodes, the security around, uh, you know, sandboxing the apps, sandboxing the hardware resources as well. That's right. And forcing you to be, you know, signed, but also, uh, you know, how do you set up the access to the various hardware resources and so on? So we have plenty more to talk about. That's right. So I hope to see you soon back on the show to deep dive into all these features. Look forward to being back. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, you'll get more of Azure Sphere development soon.